Before it used to be a shearing operation, maybe a punching or lasering operation to a bending to another bending. Now it's load a hundred sheets of steel into the warehouse. At the end of the machine comes a form finished part. Hi, this is Tim Heston, Senior Editor at The Fabricator Magazine. And thank you so much for joining us for this episode of Automation Talk, a new video series presented by FMA in partnership with Salvagnini America. For this episode, I'm speaking with Eric Tomasek, Senior Manufacturing Engineer at Schindler Elevator in Hanover, Pennsylvania. That plant has become extraordinarily automated within the past 20 years. 20 years ago, it was a very different plant. Uh, it's a high mix production. Every elevator is unique, just as every building is unique. 20 years ago, it was straightforward enough. It should be very manual because they just didn't have the volume for automation. Well, not so much. Over the past 20 years, it has evolved tremendously. And today the company has a Salvagnini OPS system in place that feeds work to a S4P4 automated line on the shop floor. Uh, it's end-to-end -end automation. The company has been transformed by it. Not only uh, how parts flow, but how careers are made. It's a great story to hear, and I'll let Eric take it from here. The original machine started back in 2004. Uh, was when we first purchased the first Salvanini machine. And before that, it was a lot of just single operation, shear, punch, bend, with a different operator and different operations uh, for, for each part of, of the elevator. Um, kind of a lot of lines that were singled out for components. Um, and then when, in 2004, when we invested in the Salvanini, the first machine, uh, that allowed us to do, you know, kind of encompass all these different components uh, onto one machine, onto one flexible flexible machine. Through our uh, ERP system, right, we have all our customer requirements and uh, we basically have a transaction that we can run um, that pulls all those customer requirements out based on, uh, based on the routing for the machines. So it automatically comes out of our ERP system, creates the string data that we need, and then we can run overnight, we can run a, a batch compiler uh, into the software, our OPS software, um, that allows and compiles and, and gets all the nest uh, completed and ready for us for uh, the next day's processing. How do you manage uh, raw material as far as uh, being able to set your mins and maxes? And can you kind of, can you set your minimums lower to actually have less cash in inventory? Because we know all about material prices in the last year. Yeah. So, so, so kind, of, kind of give me that uh, kind of, can you push uh, just in time, even though everybody says, no, you can't do just in time anymore. It's like, well, well, can you, can, can you push that raw stock inventory down? The warehousing system, it does have, uh, it, it allows us to set those minimums and that way we don't have a lot of whip sitting around. We don't have a lot of raw material sitting around. Um, you know, it flashes an alert to the operator saying we're at our minimum. We're soon to be exhausted, you know, time to put up another order and we can put up a Kanban order for our materials that has a quick turnaround time with our suppliers that really it comes off the truck and goes into the storage uh, system that night and then it's ready for use the next day. So we don't have bundles of steel having to sit around everywhere, cantilever racks sitting everywhere. Um, you know, you can really utilize the, the system to drive your, your call points for ordering. Everything's fully automated, right? Um, all that, that information is fully done automated. Uh, basically, we just do a little bit of manipulation, send it to the machine. The operator can then pull, pull the uh, run that they're scheduled to run for that day, run those components. Uh, and, and I mean, all the material is, is fully automated selection based on the component size, right? So we have a, a warehousing system of you know 90 different types of materials that we may have in there uh you know your stainlesses your carbons your galvanized pieces um different sizes for sheet utilization uh to that way we don't have all the scrap and uh the, the software actually does all that automatically and their algorithms take it and they pull those correct sizes that uh minimizes our, our scrap you know for our kpis as well and to kind of bring me through, like, you know, what I want to get to, too, is kind of the, the career path of, of folks coming through your facility and, you know, kind of the kind of bring me kind of compare and contrast kind of the old school fab shop where it's manual operation. You need to, you know, learn, learn bend deductions. You need to learn how sheet metal forms and gets through and, and, and it's all about you and the machine versus 
here in here here at your plant, it's it's more of a systems based approach. So, so kind of bring me through your your, your process and how how you bring people on board and and uh, shepherd them up the career path, so to speak. Yeah. So so originally, right, it was it was uh, a lot of uh, skill set, uh, manual labor type machines, um, having to learn how to do all these manual operations. Um, bent, like you say, bend deductions, programming on press brakes, you know, setting everything up, a lot of changeover, a lot of, you know, a lot of waste, right? A lot of downtime. So when we move into this fully automated system where it's a, a warehousing system with a punch uh, and right angle shear going into a ro like a rotating device and then into a panel bender type situation um, that's fully automated, now it comes to an operator system, right? maintaining the flow of materials through the machine. Um, the, the bending programs are all pre-done from engineering. Uh, the nesting and everything is done offline. You know, it's done ahead of time. So, you know, really we can drive a schedule then uh, where an operator just has to come in, uh, get set up, you know, just make sure that the material is in the warehouse, which we, you know, we do based on the schedule predetermined for what we're running tomorrow and uh, they select the, the program and it, it starts pulling the material automatically and you know they're standing at the end of the line attaching a label and putting them into racks. Our bottleneck can kind of change daily because we work on averages because some jobs might have say four entrances some have 40 you know so we're, we're working on averages and, and based on scheduling some days or some weeks may have a peak or a low point in something like that. Um, so our bottleneck might come from, maybe it's a, a peak in painted operation or something like that. So it, it's more in our next operations after the first first two, I would say, uh, being like our punching and our, our bending. Um, our bottlenecks kind of come after that point when maybe it's a, uh, a high carbon and needs a lot of different painted colors or something coming through. That's where our bottlenecks tend to come from. What we do is we build that into our automated part of the programming, right? We actually take and we prioritize our carbon first. So that way, if it's a two hour long, um, say production run, we're pumping off the, the carbon first so we can push it to the next operations and kind of fast forward those operations. Um, so that way, and then we'll run the stainless and bring it back and then we'll pair everything back up in assembly or after the painting operation, whatever that may be. Um, so we're utilizing the system to set up based on material types, what the priority should be first. What the priority should be first. Uh, that is a key point uh, with automation as far as automation, looking at all the data points, it's a software automation on the front end, looking at all the data points, having folks set parameters for the software so it can draw information and look at the entire operation and see what the optimal flow is to, uh, to optimize the downstream constraints, the downstream bottlenecks, is the changing fab shop career. People entering the shop floor today are gonna experience a very different metal fabrication career than their, uh, than their counterparts 30 years ago. Uh, they're managing whole processes, whole flows, whole operations, uh, even uh, from the front lines, because they see where parts are coming from, where parts are going, and they have ideas on how better to flow the product through. So thank you again for joining us on this uh, episode of Automation Talk. And on behalf of FMA and Salvinini America, we'll see you next time.